Mic check, mic check, one, two, what is this? Hello. Welcome everyone. This is gonna be a quick video about how to improve your mechanics and your aiming. And we're just gonna do, do it by kind of helping to give you guys the you know, language and the ideas you need to diagnose your weaknesses and over time have directed effective practice to improve those weaknesses until everything is better. As opposed to instead what is an aimless, maybe an aimless approach, ironically, where you're just trying to force things and you're not really thinking about what you know what actually are my weaknesses, how can I specifically target them? So, you know, one thing this video is not gonna be is I'm not gonna talk about your setup or your settings. And there is a podcast I did record, which um, I believe answers the question fairly well as to, and the question being, what is a good reason to change my settings? Going into something like this, I want you guys to be already pretty comfortable with what you're using and you're not thinking about that. Instead, what we're thinking about uh, is, you know, how can we get good aim from whatever we're at right now to where we want to be in a few months time? Now, after training for a couple months, you may find that, hey, you know what? I'm actually undershooting or overshooting specifically in, um, you know, I have trouble uh, on my flicks or, you know, I have trouble with the long range tracking, that precision tracking. I can't quite get consistent movement on that. And I've been experiencing this for a couple months. That's, that's, you know, these are, those, these are becoming good reasons to then change stuff, but I'm hoping to give you guys the framework so you can get to those good reasons to change stuff if those changes need to be made. And maybe you do need different friction on your mouse pad, or maybe the mouse doesn't quite offer the, the optimal grip for your particular anatomy and the way that you use the mouse. Um, and the other thing I won't be going into too much is the, a lot of the psychological elements. Um, I talk about those things all the time, but that is a huge topic, but all the psychological elements that may impact your performance. Now, one of the reasons um, as well why directed practice is really important is because it keeps helps to keep us happy and give us a good relationship to the game. If you're in a situation where you're, you're, you have this crazy hunger this, to, to get better, you're very competitive, got a lot of drive, and, you, and it's one of the most important things in your life right now to improve, and this is the goal that you set yourself and you're not experiencing those improvements, what can happen in my experience is you can get very angry or disappointed or generate a very bad relationship with the game and the people around you playing the game um, because you're putting in all this all this energy, but you're not doing it correctly, but still all this energy and it's not getting you the results you want. It's very frustrating. So this is this is an approach that helps us to understand that when we when a problem comes up, we know how to approach that problem to deal with that problem and then we can accept and, and be assured that that problem will slowly improve over time. Now we don't have to think about it. Now we can just move on to whatever the next thing is that we have to deal with in the game. And that's a much healthier place to be. So without further ado, let's start talking about uh, aiming mechanics and the constituent parts. So in terms of you know aiming and mechanics, these are umbrella terms effectively, which encapsulate a lot of different ideas. So for example, if we break aiming down in Counter-Strike, it's, it's relatively simple uh, in the sense that you know there's, there's small flicks, like movements that you need to make very, like pretty much almost instantly at small distances, medium distances, and, you know, big distances. And depending on if you're a palm player or a wrist player, you might find some of these things easier or harder. Everything can be improved and effectively managed with good technique, good practice. And that's what we're here to build. So what is one of the ways that we can tackle this problem? So in terms of, you know, the flicks and everything, flicking is, is uh, you know, it's very important that we have good first bullet precision when we're, when we're flicking. Now, it might not always be perfect. You may all, you know, sometimes need small adjustments. That's where the, you know, the tracking can come in in handy. But but generally speaking, we want to be able to practice our precision. One of the best ways to do that is to be able to do things slowly. You can think of it like when you're learning to touch type. When you're learning to touch type, what we're doing is we, it's very challenging and then you, you know, and you have a large degree percentage of errors, you know, in your typing. And then as you keep, keep, you know, wearing away, eventually the errors, the percentage of errors decreases and you end up at this comfortable words per minute. And then to increase that words per minute, you have to add intensity. And in so doing, you add an increase of errors. The errors go up again as, as you know, you start to like really force yourself and add that intensity. Eventually the errors will go down again. And that's kind of the same process here with aiming. What we need to be able to first establish as well as that baseline, you know, what is the baseline in terms of, I want to make sure that every shot lands I'm not you know, missing any shots. And this is going to help you train your motor memory. And you have to figure out, okay, how fast can I go to and not miss anything? So this is like, seems like a baseline for me. 
you can see that it's not very snappy, not very instant. It's it's okay, it's decent, but it's not perfect. And if I try to increase things, you know, how fast can I do that? Okay, well, that's not too bad. And this is kind of what you want to be experimenting with. And I would say that this is the process that you should you should undergo is, okay, I want to keep the errors down. So, you know, start slow. If you can do it slow, you can build up to do it fast. So keep yourself just doing it as slow as you need to to keep the accuracy up. And then every so often, just challenge yourself and go a little bit faster. Try to push that limit just a little bit more. And that's going to help you to slowly increase increase your speed whilst maintaining the accuracy, because that's what we want. We want both the speed and the accuracy. We, you know, one is useless without the other, uh, ultimately speaking. So, you know, there you go. There's, there's some thoughts on flicking. One way you, you can train flicking. And if you want to design uh, a routine around this, I would say, you know, something like 10 minutes of doing stuff, uh, of doing this approach where, you know, you spend, you could do the first 50 kills where you're doing, you know, you're looking for the, you know, precision. And then after you do the 50 kills, you try to speed it up for the remainder of the 50 kills. And we're talking about the, the, the challenge. And we're just using, you're just using this because it's a number that you can actually help. That's not actually the right thing I just pressed, is it? Or is it? Uh, it's a number that you can actually use to help you understand and see improvements because you see the actual time. Now, the other thing that is important uh, beyond flicking is tracking. Tracking is also a very important component when it comes to aiming. And tracking is important in targets that are far, medium, and slow. If a target is far away, it's moving very slowly. If it's very, if it's very close up, it's moving very quickly. We need to be very accurate with our tracking, no matter which distance the opponent is from us. And this is very helpful as well, especially if you miss one of those flicks, because then you can start to track them. Flicking, uh, tracking is also really important when it comes to the ability to aim with pistols, because with pistols, it first bullet, sure, you know, first bullet accuracy is great, but if you have good crosshair placement, you miss the first shot, it's okay because the shots refresh pretty quickly. It's pretty accurate. You just need one shot to kind of, you know, to kind of kill them. And and this is something that you can use to try to like practice your tracking. So it's like one of the things that you can use, just try to follow the targets with your crosshair. There are also tools like Aim Labs and Kovacs, which you can use for stuff like this. Um, you can see I'm not doing a very good job on that one, but, but the, the important thing with tracking is consistency. You have to have the mouse control to be able to be very far away from the target and move it very consistently because consistent tracking is absolutely key. It has to be consistent. And when I say consistent, I mean like the, the speed of it moves consistently because it matches, it's supposed to match the speed of the enemy model. So this is something that you want to be able to practice um, because tracking is, there's lots of elements, there's lots of areas, sorry, in the game where you need to have good tracking aim. Obviously, when it comes to using a rifle as well. You know, you're gonna be, have to actually track the opponent as they're moving with the bullets sometimes to like land all of the bullets on your spray. And that's also incredibly important, especially if they're like close up to you and they're jumping around. Um, I have some other, I have, there's another map that I like specifically for that one that we'll jump into really, really quickly to demonstrate that perhaps, we'll see. Um, but yeah, tracking, big deal. And after this, I'm gonna show you the next thing that's a more, um, active practice in terms of tracking. And I'll take this moment to say as well that aiming is something that should not be sort of a conscious thing necessarily. When we, what we're doing right now is we're doing conscious directed, that doesn't make sense because look where I am. We're, we're talking about conscious directed practice. So it's very intense, which is why I don't think you should spend, should spend a huge amount of time doing it. When we go into something like deathmatch, now that's something where you, you're not it's not as directed or as conscious. It's more about just running around and, and you know, just kind of feeling it out. And we'll get there in a moment to the deathmatch component. doesn't seem like any bots are spawning with me here. So this is a bit of a fail, but that's okay. We're going to go to the deathmatch anyway. And we'll get into a Mirage. Mirage is very, very nice. I prefer it to us too personally for deathmatching. So we're going to look at crosshair placement now. And crosshair placement is incredibly important for a couple of reasons. It's, it's really important in terms of visualization. So the anticipation, the kind of, that's like a psychological priming element which improves your reaction speeds. Extremely important. And that's part of the reason why we want good crosshair placement because we're always 
in our minds, I almost seeing ghostly images, visages of these enemy models moving around um, as we're aiming around corners, and that will serve to improve your action time significantly. It's very important that you practice that you're thinking about that and you're imagining them to be coming around the corner. And that's what this pre-aiming is also about. So you have like pre-aiming where it's like flicky. So look how look how this is. I'm not shooting a target, but like the flicking is really important here. And much like the tracking will be, and you'll see it in a moment. So, you know, now I'm moving around the map and we're practicing, a, uh, we're practicing a concept where we don't want wasted mouse movement, generally speaking. So you can see I'm kind of tracking is angle snapping. And now here I'm like shoot, aiming through the wall because maybe there'll be someone in the, uh, these areas. And my, I'm not as good at this as I was in terms of my mechanics usually i'm a lot uh, sharper but we want the angle snapping to the spots where they can be be attacking you and then you know you flick to the next places and then now i'm tracking see how it's like tracking him again and then it's flicking and then just angle snapping now these are the things you want to practice because we don't want any wasted move mouse movement that's one way to think about it no wasted mouse movement and then i you know i want you to think about that because you know then what is what is wasted mouse movement you know effectively like when we could cross their place, and what's really cool is that if someone comes around this corner, my mouse only has to move minimally, and now I'm active, activating um, just a long-range tracking aim. You know, if I mess up the crosshair placement. Obviously, another thing about crosshair placement um, is is about anticipating: are they going to run into this angle, or are they going to walk into this angle? And then you know how to close or far away to put your crosshair. So, for example, you can see here I expect a, a, a run, not a walk peak, and I was correct. I didn't hit the shot, but that, that's okay. So once and when you're death matching, you're running around, you know, angle snapping and tracking and so on. This is going to be improving your aim. This is an opportunity also when you're in the game playing to also do this. Now, I'm going to quickly mention as well that when you're playing uh, Counter-Strike, the, you know, we talked about having effective and directive practice. Focusing on aiming is, is pretty intense and to do it for this period of time is pretty intense. And effectively, you know, when you're in a game, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be actively focusing on it or thinking about it. That's not really what we're here to do. Um, in the game, you're there to make decisions and you've already kind of built in enough, you know, muscle memory and you've built in all of the right habits because we're practicing them right now in terms of how you actually, you know, aim and how you uh, handle various situations in the game in terms of aiming whether it be tracking or flicking or whatever it be, you know, be you're, you're kind of already ready for that. So when we're in the game, we're just thinking about decision making. And the, and the reason also for that is because if if we apply any success criteria to aiming, we're going to create problems mentally because aiming is inherently inconsistent. You're going to miss shots sometimes. You shouldn't really be thinking about it. And when are we at our best? It's when we're not thinking about aiming because it's a subconscious activity that requires, you know, that subconscious element to to perform at its best and what happens when you become very aware and self-conscious about something you're like oh god i'm not aiming very well well you're starting to stress out about it and you're focusing on it in the wrong way it should just be automatic and as soon as it doesn't become automatic then you've got you've got problems in your performance in terms of aim so the game is for decision making the practice and everything is to kind of focus on aiming um and you can see here here as well you know i'm just trying to you know practice what I preach as I talk to you and you know hopefully some of these ideas were useful to you guys in terms of how you think about aiming and how you can improve things and if you have any questions please you know leave them in the comments I would love to hear them and I will certainly answer them and you know maybe if I get enough questions on, or if I get a lot of questions I can turn it into a podcast or a you know follow-up video but aiming is pretty simple guys in in terms of in terms of how we you know want to practice it just have to be diligent and you have to be consistent with your practice and treat it, you know, if you truly are serious about improving, you know, treat it like, you know, imagine how someone who's going to be drafted onto a professional sports team is going to be, uh, you know, treating their sport and discipline. It's going to be a huge thing in their life. They're going to have, obviously they have the benefit of coaches and people to program training for them. And you don't have that. So if, if you actually are, you know, industrious and entrepreneurial enough, you know, figure that out by yourself. Like, what are the ways that you can start your day, add some consistency to your training, um, create a routine. Um, you know, when I was last competing and I got, I actually got my mechanics and my aim to a, a level, bef I think that, I think I'd been, I've been inactive professionally for like four or five years. And I came back for, for, you know, a few months and I got my aim and mechanics to a, a level that it had never, you know, seen before. It was like, it, it got, you know, very high level 
uh, in terms of my MMA mechanics and was able to, to battle some of the most elite in Quake Champions at the time and was the best, you know, individual in that sense on my team at the time. And that was just because I had extremely regimented training. Uh, you know, every day I'd wake up and when I would get onto the PC, I would have a, a 10 minute routine of a certain aim uh, program that I was using. And then I would go into another 10 minute routine of a different aim practice to kind of figure out, you know, this is specific work on something that that I feel like I'm weak on. And I would just keep, you know, keep practicing the things that I was weak on. And then I would create a situation whereby um, after I'd done all of that focus practice, I'd go into some practice that made me feel good. And so I'd have like a better emotional, you know, feeling in terms of confidence. That's what deathmatch is good at too in CS. It's good at being that kind of emotional boost, making you feel confident, making you have like a reason not to think about your aim. The worst thing is when you enter a game and you feel like, oh, my hands feel cold or it feels a bit sluggish on the movements. That's what we, that's what deathmatch is here to, to help you with. This is here not as much for aim practice. You can use it for that. You can grind out deathmatch for fun if you you know if you want to if you enjoy it. That's totally cool. But you need to just know what you're doing and just make the decision and that's that's what you're doing. Um, but you can also um, use it just to feel com comfortable. And here is here is the last concept I'm going to leave you guys with before closing out the video. It's this idea of minimum effective dosage. If you're about to pr practice a lot of CS, and you've got a bunch of matches coming up in the day, practices or whatever they are, you want to use deathmatch as a, you know, just to just to get warm. It's not there. It's not there to improve your aim. You, you have your dedicated aim practice for that. It's there to for you to just feel good and to feel confident and to feel like there's nothing wrong. It's, it's like, like, like you don't have that feeling like you can feel the mouse, you know, like you're, you can feel your arm. Something feels a bit off or a bit, you know, weak or a bit. There's, you know, something's weird. All oh, my hands feel like really sweaty and weird. And did you like, you know, you know the feeling I mean. You want to feel like it's an extension of your of yourself as opposed to some appendage that you can really feel. Uh, I don't think I'm explaining this very well, but you understand what I mean. So, so that's that's what you're you're trying to get with the death match is just that feeling of comfort. And then once you have that, you've you've done. You're done. You're done in death match. Once you have that comfort, go play some matches now. Um, and with that said, I'm gonna end the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will speak to you um, on another video that is probably going to be coming out either later today or tomorrow because I'm pumping out content like a mofo. Cheers.